Just watched Deadwood episode 12, Sold Under Sin. Sin. The season finale of the incredible first season. What the fuck did you think of this fucking episode, you hooplehead? What a journey. What a journey. What a, what a meaning of character. Yeah. Um, no, it was great. It, it was brilliant. great. Brilliant ending to the, to the season. Yep. Um, I want to explain briefly the events of it. I'll give it a go. Okay. Seth Bullock, who finally gets to act like a straight person. <laughs> and in, interesting. And interesting in this episode. Yeah. Um, is pissed off at the plans that Otis Redding. Yep. Who is Alma Garrett's father. Alma Garrett's father. He gets pissed off at the plans that he has for Alma and her gold claim. Yep. And lets out all his pent up anger on him. Beats him to a bloody pulp. So he spits out teeth. Yeah. The... Dense and complicated business affairs of Al finally come to their logical conclusion. Logical conclusion uh, where this he uh, ma magistrate magistrate Claggett comes into Deadwood um, along with the um, like a small army who have come to basically decide whether Deadwood should be a camp or whether it should become part of America. Yes, he's one uh, with them, and um, he has he has Al's. Um, Warrant with him yeah. to use as um, uh, to exploit him, um, and Al brilliantly just uh, cuts his throat. Yes. Uh, well, he gets Adams to cut his throat. Adams is now on Team Al. Yes, he's an Al supporter. Yes, and um, the jet, the army um, ride away. America is still not uh, Deadwood is still not part of America. <laughs> Mister, Mister, yeah, Mr. Mr. a dangerous position. They did. Um, also, at the same time, Al. Um, Agrees with with the doc to take care of the priest, the pre uh, reverend, the reverend whatever his name. Yes, um, he's just usually referred to as the reverend. The reverend is yeah. he? Oh, Reverend Smith. Reverend Smith. Yeah, to yeah. to look after Reverend Smith in his dying hours, and then in a brilliant scene because he can't bear to see this man in such pain. Also, because his brother went through the same thing. Yeah, he uh, takes him out of his misery. He does. He um, he puts a cloth over his mouth and kills him. Yep. And in an absolutely brilliant. Um, so in, the, in what makes it so brilliant is the fact that he's talking to uh, Johnny about what makes a good uh, highwayman, mm -hmm. and then he gives this like speech about you've got to hold it in this way, you've got to close oh, yeah. the passage, yeah. and then it's um, a cold, also methodical way of killing. Yes, and applied to a very passionate sort of murder. Yeah. And um, did you find it all on the nose that he said? Um, so long, brother, at the end. Oh, yeah. I found it was a little on the nose, but I think Ian McShane sold it. Yeah, he did, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah he sold it well. Um, also, in this episode, Bullock, yep. in a fit of rage and anger like he always is, uh, sees injustice everywhere and he rips the sheriff's badge yep. from Con Stapleton. Yeah, that, that, that guy, that douchebag nobody liked. And he agrees with Al that he will be the town's sheriff. Yes. So that's the, the concluding scene for this, which is a bad place to start, but mm -hmm. oh well. Um, it's amazing because it's some, it pretty much ties off every storyline. Yeah. It, they kill the, it's like the last scene lasts about 15 minutes, and within this one scene, you've got... Uh, well, it's not like a scene, it's sort of just... It's little scenes, but they all are com like follow each a other. Montage. Yes, you've got um, Bullock sleeps with Alma. Oh, yeah. Yes, um... The, the, the gayest character on camp is finally getting some pussy. Yes, he sleeps with Alma. Um, Al gets his name cleared, finally. Setting up a second season where Al is a free man. Free man. Essentially. Um, they decide Deadwood isn't part of America. You've got, um... Jules Boot as well is in this scene. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and um, he becomes sheriff. What well, he was pretty much always going to be from the very first yes. scene he was in. So it's good that they've finally uh, yeah. uh, done that arc for him. They've done the arc there. They've pretty much... They pretty, it's a weird season because a lot of seasons now tend to leave the door open for plot lines. Like in their finale. You know, like I'm trying to think like uh, like Breaking Bad would end on a cliffhanger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they not as not all of them do that much, but they'll end, they'll end on like a little few bits that can be going forwards. This doesn't really do that. Pretty no. much every single plot line from season one has been resolved. Yeah. And like, I reckon if the show had ended here, it would be amazing still. And there's not really anything that like, if you had, if you, it would obviously be sad not to continue the journey with these characters. 
but it's like if it finished here, it would still be a complete story. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything yeah. summed up. Everything that David Milch wanted to say about like the creation of America, you could infer that from here. He goes into more depth later on, but it's just such a stunning episode of television. Yeah. Yes. What was your favourite moment? Um, probably the part where um, uh, Al. I know they are. We've got two. Um, where Al obviously kills the Reverend. That is a beautiful scene. Yeah, that's a great moment. And then the last shot where Al is looking around the bar and the Doc is dancing with Jules. Jewel, it's just Jewel. Jewel. Yeah. Um, because she's got a new like brace for her leg and it's working. Yeah. And the characters have a brief moment of happiness. Yep. Um, for I think the first time in the entire show you see Trixie smile. Yes. Uh, Trix Trixie smiles back at Al, and Al just kind of nods in like. Yeah. The way he does. I thought that was a really powerful moment. It was powerful. Yeah, that was a great moment. And my favourite is actually earlier on. It's the moment where Bullock beats. Uh, oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Redding even. Mr. Redding. Yes, but I love the way that um, what the scene does and what Deadwood will do a lot later on, and it has done in this season. It's like it says every character up, so you know every single main character is in that scene. Pretty. Oh much. yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Because what it does is um, the geography of Deadwood is all just like a few streets. Yeah. But it, he walks across and every single character is there and it gives the actual feeling of this big commune. I don't think any show has ever had like the feeling of one commune. I know that's part of it is just because of the geography of where everything is and the fact it is these like few streets. But the way that he walks around and you know where every single character is and every bit and like you know everywhere the way they're feeling about it, it gives the show a sense of being an actual ensemble other than a lot of shows. Where they just throw like three storylines in, and then they call that like enough to oh, make somber. it so. Yeah. Like there is no real lead character in Deadwood. There is Al is a main character. He's not, but he he came to dominate the show a lot. Yeah, he came to dominate it, but he's not the lead character. No, but it was advertised pretty much as the Al show. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like you'd just tune in and watch him like kill some people, and Good. that was it. Watch it seem. Probably my second favourite of the episode is the one where um, the doc is praying. Oh, that's great, yeah. To yeah, God. yeah. I mean, it's amazingly well acted by um, Brad Dourif. Dourif, yeah. Dourif. Yes, but I think it also gets into one of the points of what it's trying to say. I think one of the themes is that, you know, you have to be open to move forwards and to, like, um, you know, it's all about progress. The characters come and the ones who can move forward and be something else are the ones who tend to live. Yeah. But the ones who don't, like, while well, Bill Hickok. And the Reverend, he still is a religious man who doesn't seem to be wholly part of this progressive world die. Yeah. And it's the way that he prays to God to answer his prayers to kill the Reverend. And who answers? Al. Al. <laughs> Fucking Al. That gets to the point, I think, that Al is supposed to be sort of the god of this sort of camp. Because hmm. I know, like, the way the geography of it is that Al and Alma look down on everyone else. Yeah. And um, Seth also made one, but I don't think they ever used it again, because he had the top of his... Oh, yeah, top of his workshop. But I don't think they've used that since, like, the fourth episode. No. But they've got this... And Sai has it, obviously, as well. The Almost top of like his, a, um... a Greek chorus. Yes. They look down on the action of, sort of, the little people. Yeah. Yes. And um, the thoroughfare almost acts like a... Um, like a cleansing sort of way that the gods of this camp can come into it. Like the way where Alma, after being humiliated by her father, who just completely ignored her. Basically her father, she offers her father like, I think it's 48,000, yeah. um, just to never come back. And he just ignores her knowing that he can pretty much do whatever he wants. What a dick. What a dick. He's a proper what dick, innit? Yeah. Like, we're, you just want him to get hit as no, hard yeah. as possible. No, 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 like, that was great. That was a great. Yes. Another thing that I like about Deadwood is um, that... Unlike a lot of, like, The Wire and The Sopranos, which were the other ones, um, they were like these big arty shows and they were known for sort of like, they, had, they were so dense and they had to pay so much attention to them and like you had to like really investigate stuff out of them and they didn't go for like crowd pleasing moments. Yeah, yeah. But this one I think, I think Deadwood goes in to sort of entertain more. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, yeah. like that moment is a big crowd pleasing moment, isn't it? He's a person who's clearly the villain. There's no way that anyone can see him as sympathetic, really. And he finally gets some, uh, guess what's coming to him. And he actually gets beaten up. Like, I think another show would have just... Because it's not the logical thing for Bullock to do. No, no, no. It makes no sense at all. No, but he still does it. And it's true to the character, because he's homicidal lunatic. <laughs> yeah. 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 Definitely. But, yeah, he still does it. He beats him up. And that's, like, a big crowd-pleasing moment. You know, you can go, like, yes, he's finally got it. 
piece of shit. He's got bad guy. Yes. This episode's also really good in showing how Deadwood was different from a lot from a lot of shows even now, where dialogue scenes aren't just a one shot followed by a one shot followed oh, by a one yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah. Like there's a brilliant one that's really well directed where it's Alma and Otis again. And they're talking and it could have easily just been one shot, but what they do is they talk where they're next to each other and he's he stood above her actually and like she's like that and he's there. And then what they do is they, first it's shot just like that, the camera there looking at both of them. And then it's the mirror and then it's back again. So it's not just one stationary shot, it's, it's actually interesting to watch. But it's not just one shot, one shot, one shot. That really distracts me in TV, where it's a one shot, one well, shot, one shot, where they just do dialogue scenes. It's more for like e economic purposes, is it, more than anything. Yeah. Because without time to set up the cameras or have the money to set up the cameras, yeah. But it's really cheap looking, isn't it? It is, it's yeah. It's really yeah. distracting though, like you'll watch it and it'll just be nit, 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 and that's it, all that happens. It's done more for like convenience rather than any kind of artistic reasons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, it is. That's true. But it's great, isn't it, watching like, and, and it's, the show is so well like shot and well lit. Oh, yeah, it just yeah, looks yeah. amazing, like, everything just comes out, it's just, and ah, it's just so good, the, the way it looks. Like, it's got a really weird look, I think, because it could be really dull, because it's almost all greys and Yeah, greys and browns. Blacks, browns and greys, that's basically all it is. But they managed to find such life in that sort of like limited palette it's, it's really interesting here. like another show could have shot this really boring yeah it? yeah yeah and just done that but quite um, stately like stately yeah like Howard's End yeah <laughs> you know that kind of thing but it really makes it come alive Downton Abbey yes would you say Sold Under Sin is the best episode of season one I think it is I watched these episodes so far apart from each other it's hard for me to yeah kind of compare them episode by episode yeah and um, Definitely one of the best. Absolutely, yes. yeah. I would say it's either this or Jewel's boot is made for walking. Jewel's boot is made for walking. I don't think there was a scene as good as the one where Al got the blowjob and gave the monologue. No, that, that's true. That was great. Or even a scene as good as the one where um, Al stared at the preacher uh, talking to the cow's anus. Mm. But um, but this scene, I think, is just classic scene after classic scene after classic scene. Because the first season's all it almost feels like everything is set up for this. Like you've got the bit where he gets the badge out of the mud, you've got the bit where they, didn't, where they dance at the end and it's every single scene I think in this pretty much is just classic scene after classic scene. Would you agree? Was there anything in the finale you didn't like? The only thing I had, I had some trouble following. Yeah. Which is probably due to the density of the writing. Yeah. It's just the whole thing with Al's plea. Thing. Oh, the Byzantine plotting of the uh, yeah. Magistrate Claggett. That's the only thing I've kind of not... Well, I've kind of struggled to keep up with. Yeah. Um, but that's probably more fault of me for not paying attention enough. Yeah. Or, or it could be the writing's so dead. The writing's so dead that yeah. Deadwood uh, rewards repeated viewings and you understand it does. more about what's going on. Yes. Um, but the writing is quite dense, so you, you've, you've really got to pay attention. So if you drift off for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like it'll back, come back to buy you later. It will. It's pretty much just a, you have to spend the whole hour paying your full attention. Yeah. Yes, and you're right. It does re do reward. I mean, I watched this at fourteen and I had no clue what was going on at all. <laughs> I really enjoyed sort of like the dialogue yeah, and the humor yeah. of it, but I didn't really understand it at all. I got like the Bullock storyline. That's quite simple to follow. Yeah, and that's easy to follow and individual bits. But yeah, the stuff with Al was just like oh yeah, over yeah. head and like. Um, all the stuff about it becoming America it was just like, what the hell is What's this? Going on? But I think it does enough to make it enjoyable. Yeah, to watch. yeah, yeah. But I think, I think there's plenty of stuff like that where, yeah, you know, you're, you're, you're something like Blade Runner. Uh -huh. To pick up a guy that plays EB again. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I had no idea about films about when I first watched it, but I still enjoyed it. Yeah. It's still a really good film. And then when you watch it again and again and again, like, oh, this is, this is pretty great. Yep. It's a little, I think Dead was a little bit like that. It is. It's it's so full of I think this episode is so full of life as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. full of kindness and unexpected sort of moments between each character. Like Joni and Alma meet. Oh yeah, yeah, that was nice, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And a bit of a meta moment where Al went, um, I don't think you've spoken to her. Oh yet. yeah, yeah, that was really good, yeah, I liked that, yeah. I don't think I've ever talked about women since you came to camp. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a really great moment, yeah. That, that, that was funny because oh yeah, they've, they've not really met or talked. Is that even though he killed her husband, set the whole plot in motion? Yeah. That's like I think that's a moment about how like even though these characters are linked, they don't always physically meet. Yeah. Even though yeah. they have this huge power over each other. 
But like this camp even, even though there's so many storylines and so much going on and so many different characters that even the two two of the main characters don't even meet. Yeah. But yes. Almost um, a Game of Thrones-esque. Yes. Would you say 10 out of 10 for oh, Soul yeah. Under Sin? Oh yeah, yeah. Easy. Excellent. 10 out of 10. So we'll be talking about season one. I think this show definitely deserves watching like a whole season review kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, God, I need to cast my mind back to like the whole thing. Yep. Yeah, because we've been watching these over the course of like two months. Yeah. And like, so basically watching like a, what, like an episode. Like I'm on average about maybe two episodes every fortnight. Yeah. Yeah. So it's about an episode a week. And <laughs> but basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Episode a week, yeah. Uh, which is maybe the best way to watch it because he lets it soak in a little bit. Yeah. But at the same time, there's certain little threads where I've been like, Oh yeah. I think the second, I think the first season is better. Like, second season, I think, is better watched episode after episode after episode. Okay. I might but, have to do um, some extracurricular watching. Yes. Yeah. We'll get to that one, and then we'll join us for what may be my favourite episode of TV of all time: A Lie Agreed Upon, Parts One and Two. Oh my god. Anyway, fucking hell, ten Cheers. out of ten, amazing. Cheers. <laughs>